Hello everyone, this is Falcon202 from MGTV. The online PvP is not out yet, but the online FOB system is up and running. And many people are fretting over it, primarily because they don't know how it works. It was poorly explained by the game. And this video will explain how the system will work. And will also give you hints and tips uh, as to getting started. At the end of this video, it is hoped that you will be more inclined to try out the FOB system. And that you enjoy it. Before getting started, there's a few preliminary points. The first one being is that after you complete the mission, which requires you to come back to Mother Base and stop it from being invaded, uh, you will then be prompted to make your FOB. Before making your FOB, it is worthwhile thinking what location you want to do it, what location you would like to have it in, because depending on where you actually set it up, each location will have different um, uh, levels of yield per, per resource. Uh, I have the list plucked from IGN. And you can see it here on screen. In addition to that, um, a lot of people are worrying about the fact that you could lose your resources and personnel. And this video will hope to address those two rumors, primarily because your resources can only be stolen up to a certain extent. And secondly, uh, your personnel. Your personnel doesn't necessarily have to be taken away either, providing you are smart about it. We'll touch more upon this later. And it is also uh, important to mention at the outset that uh, your offline mother base cannot be touched or infiltrated in any way whatsoever and that although it uses the same resources although the same resource pool is used to purchase upgrades for your online FOB no one can actually take anything off your offline FOB but we'll touch more upon this later you'll understand what I'm talking about during the video all right let's go in okay guys so let's begin so we're gonna open up the iDroid and the first thing I want to tell you is that you shouldn't worry about the FOB online system, especially if you don't like it. And I'll tell you why now. We go into iDroid and then resources. Apologies for this. Uh, my menu takes a while to load the day that I was recording this, and I don't know why. Okay, so the first screen you'll see is processed materials, right? That's very much straightforward. But if you press R1 and you go to unprocessed materials, you'll see that the numbers change a little bit. Now, the figure outside the brackets, the figure to the left of the brackets shows you your total amount. You see where that globe is? That one, where, well, let's take the first row, for example, 1,082, the globe next to it. That is the amount of resources that is on your online FOB, and it is only that that can be taken uh, via theft from an infiltrator, okay? That 2,881 is your offline, right? And it's important to mention at this stage, your offline mother base cannot be infiltrated or subject to theft or anything, right? No one can touch your offline mother base, right? This just gives you a breakdown of the resources that can be taken and the resources that cannot be taken. So do not panic. Give it, give the FOB a go. And you're not only you could only use in terms of as far as resources and cargo containers, it is only the figure with the globe that can be taken. So now that we established that mother base and FOB resource pool is kind of separate, in the sense that only one can be touched, um, we will move on to the next bit. Once you do mission 21 and you complete the response to the infiltration, you'll Notice your iDroid will have a few more menu options for you to select from, okay? So we'll go over to security settings. So, once you go into security settings, you'll see the, you'll be able to select each platform that you actually have for that FOB. Now you see the levels on some of my platforms are already high. That's only because I've uh, assigned the devices and security staff to them. I'll explain that in a few moments later. But for now, all you need to know for this is that you can select each platform. And then when you select each platform, you have your basic and advanced settings. So we go to basic settings and this is pretty much you set the level of preparedness for each infiltration. The higher the preparedness, the more you'll have to fork out for each infiltration, okay? When you go into advanced settings, you can choose, you can fine tune the level, the extent of the security 
personnel and devices for each deck. Now, it's, it, it's important to understand that the higher level your deck, or will the more decks per platform, the harder it is, harder it will be for someone to infiltrate it, because they're going to have to go jump. They're going to have to jump through more hoops to get to the core. But let's just show you. So let's just look at the setting for all decks, because I like to fine tune them across the board. So here you can choose what weapon type you want. Obviously, I go for lethal. You can choose the guard rank priority, but I don't worry about that too much because I don't put my best guard on the FOB anyways. And then you can choose the range type of the personnel that you assign. You can have mid-range, close range, long range. And then you can choose how many guards you want there. And infrared sensors, anti-theft devices, cameras, UAVs and decoys. These are the first set of security devices you can build. I'll show you a way to immediately be able to craft these using a little hint uh, trick, which I'll explain to you uh, later on. And then once you happy and you fine tune it, when you back out, it will say apply to this platform or apply to command platform on all FOBs, assuming you have more than one. And then apply to all platforms on all FOBs, but I'm gonna cancel anyways, because it didn't change anything. Everybody gets one FOB for free. If you want more, then you're gonna to have to fork out for it. But so once you fine tune your security settings, the best thing to do for the time being is going to staff management. It's, Im it's important you put at least some guards there. They don't have to be amazing, but what I did was I put as many E E ranking personnel there as possible because if there's a lot of people surrounding the areas in which the person has to infiltrate in, you know, it's, they're likely to get caught because there's just so many people to avoid. Um, and obviously, once you get further in the game and you collect so many people, then it might turn out that you can actually, you know, send, you know, A-ranking people there. Now, I want to talk about the staff management side of things as far as FOBs go. Now, before talking about staff assignment, by default, make sure you have it in descending order because it will make picking your shittiest guards easier. To make sure that you have it in descending order, press R2 and just make sure it's at, at that. And don't worry if don't, if it's already at that point, just back out. Now, you have combat unit, security team, R&D team, all the individual teams you can scroll across. What I do is, as you can see, I've already put my shittiest guards on a security team just so you can fill it up. Now, <clears throat> the reason you should do that is because you can raise their level up and the importance behind having any kind of, you know, progressing level on a security team, security team is that uh, it enables you to develop security devices, okay? So now that we have it in descending order, what I did was I went to the bottom of the list, press square on all the guys that I wanted to switch over, and then press X, and then put them in a security team. As you can see, it levels them up. But I have a trick for you. To immediately craft the first set of security devices available to you, what I did was I just selected everyone from the combat team or whatever. It doesn't matter really what team you have it in. So just select them all. Um, yeah, I, I don't need to select them all. And then send them to the security team just to get the level up, okay? I just put my entire combat team in there, right? And by, you know, dumping my, all of my combat team on the offline mother base to the online FOB, it spikes the level up to the point where I can begin developing. And what that enables you to do is enables you to go into development, security devices, and then you'll be able, be able to build these. As you see, I already built them. And because I've already put a particular order to my team, I didn't, I can't really show you, but you, you get the gist, you know what to do. So you can make these, and as the higher, you, the higher the security team level is, you can proceed to make the higher, well, the other security devices. Now, there are a few hints in, on, in addition to what I just said that I'd like to share with you. The first is, well, if you, let's say you put a really good soldier on your security team and you really don't want to lose them, um, there is a way around that. And once this screen fucking finishes loading, I'll show you. 
I, I guess I'll just talk about it now to save time. What you can do is you can put them under direct contracts. Now you're limited to how many direct contracts you can have. It's a certain percentage of your total stack. Uh, but you shouldn't just do it to security team as well. You should also do direct contracts to any individual that you really like. All right. And to do that, you just push L2 on someone. So if I go into security team, let's say, let's say I like this CCCC person on my security team, di direct contract, you can see he's already locked. So you won't lose him. Another piece of information I'd like to tell you about FOB is that if guards get killed during an enemy FOB invasion or infiltration, it doesn't necessarily mean they're gone for good. They could be in your sick bay. Um, you know, and the better your medical team, the quicker they return to duty. <clears throat> Another good thing about the direct contract feature is that let's say you auto assign all staff to the best, you know, best unit that it can serve in. Direct contracts will prevent them from being auto assigned. So it's a nice way of, you know, quickly managing your, your base affairs. Well, I like to first of all reiterate that you cannot lose any of your offline mother base resources, okay? They are safe and they cannot be attacked. What you can lose is your online FOB resources and personnel, barring any direct contracts. So just to illustrate once more, it's the globe, the frigate that has the globe next to it that can actually be taken. Upon doing research, I've also found that once the materials are processed, they go into your offline mother base and are safe from any subsequent attacks. Another thing I'd like to mention is that if you have been successfully infiltrated, depending on how bad you've been infiltrated and have your stuff stolen, there will be a flock. There will be a flock plus cooldown of between 6 to 24 hours on your base, preventing any further infiltrations for another 6 to 24 hours. But that depends on how badly you've been infiltrated. Because if the person infiltrates your core, um, then, you know, he may be able to take all stuff rather than the ones he just fought on. For those daring people out there, if you do decide to infiltrate someone else's base and you successfully manage to do so, you may also get elite soldiers as rewards. So it's not just tied down to whoever's on the base. So there are, you know, pretty cool rewards. However, there are downsides. Uh, if you choose to infiltrate. That is being that you only have one opportunity to infiltrate the base, meaning that you have one attempt. Not only that, is you have to pay to initiate um, an infiltration, and if you flop, then that's your money going down the drain. Uh, the person defending the base has a lot of, well, well, a lot of advantages over you. Similarly, you can build a network of people or build relationships to help you defend your base. To recap, the online FOB is separate from the resource pool of your mother base FOB, offline FOB. The uh, staff doesn't necessarily mean you'll lose all your staff, it depends on how well you've been infiltrated and also it depends on whether you have direct contracts on any personnel you put in there. You can exploit the development list by dumping all your best stuff in there just to initiate the development and then get them back out there immediately. It's best to put some guards in your security team. It's better to have, you know, like 60 E-guards than absolutely no E-guards. And if someone is going to invade you, it's better to, you know, better to do that than... It's better to have someone there than nothing. Last piece of information that I would like to impart with you for the online FOB is uh, a hint. If you go to development, and you go to weapons and items. Now you'll notice well, after you do mission 21, you'll come across weapons that have a green logo and it will say bottom right equipable by security team staff. So you know you may want to also invest in some weapons, some good weaponry. If there are any questions you guys have, uh, I chose to film this video um, in the medical bay where quiet is because they play really fantastic music from the 1980s but guys anyways um moving on if you have any further questions about the fob um let me know um more than happy to answer them i did a bit of research and after doing a bit of research on the fob uh, pvp side of things 
Uh, it is definitely something I'm willing to try. Um, it looks more interesting. And the loss, really, there's no consequential loss because it will be any loss that you incur will be on your online FOB. Nothing will affect your campaign. All right, guys, God bless. Take care. And I'll be seeing you soon. Want to be conversant and be a knowledgeable pro at the Metal Gear story from head to toe? Be sure to check out the complete chronological explanation of the Metal Gear Solid story. It's been doing really well. It's been received really well. And yeah, be check it out. Uh, check it out, and then hopefully it enables you to enjoy the story in the game a lot more better and <laughs> reduces any confusing moments. Similarly, on the right, we also have Twitch highlights from me playing the game. The Twitch highlights are spoiler free and be sure to check it out. We also have a Minecraft series. Go on the channel and check out the Minecraft series. It's quite funny. Uh, a friend of mine convinced me to play Minecraft after many years of me being reluctant and we just, uh, and we just record our frustrations. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless.